Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Can you open up your mouth and begin to give God some praise? Come on, make this praise glorious in this place. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this time. The word of the Lord comes from Hosea chapter 6. It says, come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. God, we thank you for covering us and protecting us and keeping us and shielding us. God, we thank you for this time of consecration and prayer, God. Not for things, God, but to become one with you, to become closer with you, God, to understand what your will is and what your desire is for our lives. God, as we enter into this first night of revival, we ask that you begin to pour out your spirit on us, God. Our hearts are open. Our spirits are ready to receive from you, oh God. Some of us are broken. Some of us are tired. Some of us are weary. God, we're asking that you revive us again, oh God. Strengthen us again, oh God. Renew us again, oh God. And most of all, God, move up and down the aisles. Do what you want to do, God. God, we may have a plan. And we may have an agenda, God, but we ask right now, God, we lift our hands and surrender and say, Lord, let your will be done. Your plan, God, your agenda, your word, your way, oh God, what it is that you desire, God, out of this service. We promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Can you open up your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord? As we go higher in the Lord, can you open up your mouth and bless the name of the Lord? Come on, nudge your neighbor and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. It's so much better when we do it together. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Begin to lift up praise and adoration and thanksgiving unto God. We honor you, God. We thank you, God. You are everything that we need and more, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. song says you're everything to me. How many? Is that your testimony? Yeah, Whatever it is that I need God to be, he is there and so much more. God, we thank you for being everything. Do me a favor. Somebody clap me in here. If you don't already begin to put a smile on your face. To be in the house of the Lord. Song says, Everything, everything, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. 
on that name Jesus because I promise you that at the name of Jesus demons tremble and at the name of Jesus every knee has got to bow and at the name of Jesus cancer has got to dry up and at the name of Jesus our blood pressure has got to flee and at the name of Jesus anxiety has got to go and at the name of Jesus mental illness has got to flee Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Jesus is Lord. Come on, that Jesus is King. That He's your Redeemer. Come on, that He's your Healer. That He's your Waymaker. That He's your Strong Tower. Your Lily of the Valley. He's the Waymaker. Come on, the Miracle Worker. The Light in the Darkness. Somebody shout, Jesus.
Amen. 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 Come on, let's give him praise one more time in the house tonight. Yeah. Just bring him down. I don't know where the technical difficulties come from on a night like tonight. Out of seemingly nowhere. But nevertheless, we we're persevering. We're going through it, going forward. I want us to take a moment now and worship the Lord by way of giving on this first night of our worship experience in our revival encounter. Uh, we are grateful for this moment. You, you may have a seat. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Let's thank God for our worshipers. Sometimes when you're in the pew, you don't understand what goes on up here. It's hard to sing when you can't hear. And it's, it's incredibly hard to preach when you can't hear. You have to overwork. So that's why we're taking the time to kind of just tweak and see what's, what's going on. Uh, feels to me like something is wired in the, in the wrong way, over this way. But we're going we're gonna to fix that while we are serving and giving unto the Lord. Amen. He's been good to us already in 2024. Uh, look at this. 24 days in. In the year of 24, and God has already shown his goodness and greatness to us. And we want to give liberally tonight on the first night of our revival. We want to be a blessing to the man of God that's going to pour into us for the next two nights. Uh, my good friend and brother and mentor, Pastor Arthur Jackson III, we thank God for him. We thank God for him bringing him safely from Miami Gardens on today. So we want to sow uh, to make sure that the expenses of the revival event are covered. We're a mature church. We don't need gimmicks and schemes and all this kind of stuff. We know that we are the responsibility, uh, that we have a responsibility to take care of God's house and that he has given us resources and therefore we are the resource to take care of the business of God's house. Amen. Let's stand all over the room if you're ready, ready to give. There are several ways to give there on your screen. You can go to our website. You can go to PayPal to give the fine. Um, you, if you're in the Breeze program, there's a QR code that's coming up. We can give by way of Breeze, which we're, or, or, that's our preferred way, premier way of giving here at SG1. If you're giving cash out tonight, just down to sign SG1 Church. Let us give liberally as unto the Lord tonight. If you have those gifts, let's recite our offering affirmation over our gifts tonight. If you're ready, you're ready, hold them up. Here we go. I think as we give today's offering, we're believing God for, come on. Jobs are better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, houses and automobiles, scholarships and fellowships, seed for the sower, checks in the mail, direct deposits, gifts and surprises, finding money, Bills paid off, debts decreased or canceled, royalties received. We don't just give money, we give money with a mission, money with a mark, money with a purpose, money with a destiny, money with an assignment, money with a vision. We are Second Corinthians 9 and 8 believers, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. May ye always having all sufficiency in all things, may amount to every good work. This offering is blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! It's all time.
I want to get right into my assignment. If you have your Bibles, can you stand? I need you to have your Bibles tonight. Everyone stand. Get the Bible. If you don't have your, your Bible, go to your phone. Amen. You're going to need to have your, your Bible tonight. I'm going to go to several different scriptures, and I'm, a, I'm just a Bible preacher. I'm a Bible preacher, and you need um, to have your Bibles. And there's several things I'm going to be sharing with you. And it will behoove you and benefit you and bless you if you were to jot down several things I'm preaching. The narrative is in 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. I want to begin uh, in verse number 17. I'll conclude uh, in verse 22. 1 Kings chapter number 17. I want to commence reading in verse number 17 and I'll conclude reading in verse 23. And I would that you would leave your Bibles open as you uh, look at the Word of God with me. I'm reading from the New King James Translation. It's going to read just slightly different. But this is how my text reads. It says, Now what happened after these things, that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. Verse 18, so she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And Elijah said to her, Give me your son. He took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying, laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord and said to the Lord, O Lord my God, you have you brought also tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing her son. And the Bible says, verse 21, he stretched himself out on the child three times, cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. The Bible says in verse number 22 that the Lord heard the voice of Elijah the soul of the child came back to him and he revived. I want to preach tonight needing your prayers and God's power simply from this subject, trusting God in tough times. Help me preach. Turn to your neighbor, look at him or her and I and say, neighbor, trust God in tough times. In tough times. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. Trusting God through tough times, trusting God through tough times. This evening, my brothers and my sisters, I want to deal with an issue that I believe is relevant um, to those of us in the building and, of course, those watching online. And I thank you so much for being with us online tonight. And that issue is our ability to trust God through tough times, tough times. I, I I'm cognizant of the fact that we're just three weeks into this brand new year. And for many of us in the building and for those listening, it may be too early for us to experience tough times, only 24 days into the new year. But I've discovered that you don't prepare for war in the time of war. Uh, you prepare for war in the time of peace. We don't wait until tough times come before we start talking about and preparing for tough times because tough times are on the way. And when tough times come, part of the challenge that we have as, as believers is, is trusting God in, in difficult seasons. It's easy to trust God when you can trace God. It's easy to trust God when, uh, as my daddy would say, Satan's hellhounds are not fallaciously hounding your heels. It's easy to trust God when your children are not challenging you and your bills are not building, your finances are not fleeing, your tears are not tumbling, the enemies are not encamping, and friends are not forsaken. It's easy to trust God when you're not going through anything. But it's hard when you're going through tough times. Can the church shout tough times? And one of the challenges that we have, as I take my time and build my case tonight, is we have trust in God in tough times. It's putting God's character 
for the character of God before our current grief, meaning that when we are experiencing tough times, sometimes the devil has a way of making us forget about the character of God, who God is. We must always remember in the midst of our tough times that God, number one, is omniscient. Someone just shout omniscient. Omniscient, big word, but omniscient means that God is all-knowing, that God knows everything, that what you're going through has not snuck up on God, and that God doesn't have surprises, that trouble doesn't catch God off God because God is omniscient. Hymn writer says, Jesus knows. Come on, mother, all about our tri troubles, and he'll guide until... The day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Jesus is uh, omniscient. Not only must we be mindful of the fact that God is omniscient, we must be mindful that God is omnipotent, that God has all power. That not only does God know what we're going through, but God has the power to do something about it. That we don't have an impotent God. We don't have a, an effeminate God. We don't have a God that's lacking strength. Our God is a powerful God. That he has the power to make trouble stop. We must remember that God is omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He has all power. Thirdly, we must remember that God is omnipresent. That he's everywhere at the same time. Are y'all going to pray with me? We don't have to send God anywhere. God is already there. We don't have to send him to Alabama. Send him to Georgia, to South Carolina, to Texas, to Mississippi. We don't have to send him to Miami. He's already there. Meaning when we're going through our trials, we're not going through our by ourselves. Because the Lord is right there with us. We must remember he's omniscient, he's omnipotent, that God uh, is omnipresent. Third, fourth, but God is omnibenevolent, that God is uh, good all the time. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? He's too loving not to care, that God is good all the time. And because God is omnipotent, because he's an all-loving God, we know that all things are working together for our good. So when we're going through trials and tough times, we must remember, watch this, the character of God that supersedes our current grief. When I mention troubled times, I want to talk about this woman in our text tonight. She could be, in my estimation, the poster child for a person who's going through tough times. When you look at this 17th chapter of 1 Kings, all through this chapter, this woman has been experiencing tough times. We, we, we meet her in the first 16 verses of 1 Samuel or 1 Kings. When we first meet this woman, she's having a tough time with the difficulty of a season. And it's like somebody just shout, the difficult season. And for those of you who are Bible readers and your Bibles are open, when you go back and you look at the first 17 verses of 1 Kings, this, this woman is struggling with the difficulty of, of a season. There's a famine in the land. <laughs> Can I teach tonight? And because there's a famine in the land, things are just drying up. Uh, Elijah's brook has dried up. This woman's barrel has dried up. This woman is struggling because her season is difficult. She's not struggling because she's done anything wrong. She's not struggling because, Pastor, she failed to dot a spiritual I or cross a moral T. She's struggling simply because the season is difficult. She's not the only one struggling, but everyone uh, is struggling because the season is just that difficult. But the shout, when you read the first 16 verses of, of 1 Kings, you'll discover that in the midst of the famine, because she was faithful, God still fed her. 
um, that, that, that because she was faithful in the famine, God fed her throughout the famine. I'll try that one more time. When you, when you read 1 Kings, the first 16 verses, there's a famine in the land. And the Bible says that this woman was faithful. Touch your neighbor and say she was faithful. <clears throat> And because this woman was faithful in the famine, the Bible says that every time she stuck her hand in the barrel of meal, meal was there. Every time she poured the oil out the jar, uh, oil came out the cruise because uh, she was faithful. Can I give 50 people a reason to shout? That if you are faithful in the midst of the famine, God will fix it. That favor will follow you. I'll try it one more time. If you are faithful in the midst of the season that you're in, some kind of way, God will fix it. That favor will follow you. The Bible says every time this woman stuck her hand in the meal barrel, something was there. You missed your shout. Because somebody's testimony is in the midst of a difficult season, you didn't get a new job. God bless you on the job you had. <clears throat> In the midst of a difficult season, God didn't give you more money. He allowed the money you made to stretch. In the midst of your difficult season, God didn't give you new stuff. He kept the old stuff working. God, in, in the midst of the difficult season, God some kind of way hooked a sister up. Why? Because you were faithful. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. But can I just suggest just be faithful? Come on. Tell three people just be faithful. Just be faithful. You, you ain't got to be the best. Just be faithful. You don't have to be the most talented. Just be faithful. You don't have to be the most skilled, the most gifted. Just be faithful. You don't have to be the most anointed. Just be faithful. You don't have to be the most charismatic. Just be faithful. Big word coming. You don't have to be the most erudite in scripture. Just be faithful because if you are faithful, favor follows faithfulness. God will open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open just because you were faithful. It's never the best that gets the opportunity. It's the most faithful. It's not the best preacher that gets the church. It's the most faithful one that gets the church. It's not the best musician that gets hired. It's the faithful one that got, I got the wrong crowd. And if you are faithful over a few things, God can make Make your ruler. God, I feel like preaching tonight. Sit down. This woman, this woman, this woman, this woman. When we first, when we first meet this woman, when we first meet this woman, she's dealing with the difficulty of a season. Can the church shout the difficulty of a season? But in our text tonight, she's not dealing with the difficulty of a season. In our text tonight, she's dealing with the death of her son. <laughs> Can the church shout the death? of her son. You, 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 would think, you would think that after dealing with the difficulty of a season that God would have given her a reprieve, but that's not what the text says. The text says in verse 17, now after these things, the woman has to deal with something else. Can y'all read the Bible? The Bible says in verse 17, now what happened after these things that, that, that the son of the woman who owned the house, her son became sick. He became so sick, Bible says in verse number 17, that there was no breath left in him. This woman, after her dealing with the difficulty of a season, she has to turn around Lady E and deal with the death of her son. Death is a hard pill to swallow. <clears throat> I'll say it one more time. Death is a hard pill to um, swallow. I don't care how saved or unsaved you are. Death is a hard pill to swallow. I don't care what position you have in church. Death is a hard pill to swallow. You can serve in the pulpit or the pew from the back, from the window to the door. Help me somebody. Death is a hard pill to swallow. And we know all of the spiritual colloquialisms when people die. We know the right things to say. Earth has no sorrow that Heaven came here. We know all of the scriptures. How uh, weeping endure for a night, but 
comes in the morning. We, we know all of the scriptures, but you can know all of the colloquialisms and know all of the scriptures, but death is still a hard pill to swallow. This woman, she's dealing with the death of her son. Her son has died. I dare say that this woman is going through the most difficult trial of her life. It's hard when parents have to bury children. It's something almost unnatural about that. You would think um, that it would be the children that are burying the parents. But there's more and more times nowadays that our parents uh, are burying their children. There's an assault on black men. And more now than ever before, we have more parents burying their children children. This woman is now left to deal with the death of her son. However, you, she has to trust God in tough times. I, I've discovered, I've discovered, church, that sometimes what God will do, don't miss this, God will allow our tragedies to build our trust. Sometimes God will let you go through a tragedy just to increase your trust. That's what's happening in this text. As I unpack this narrative, this woman, her son has died, and now she has to trust God through a difficult season. Three things this woman has to trust. Write these three things down. Number one, she has to trust the plans God have reserved for her. Shout back, say the plans. God has reserved for her. She has to trust that God has a plan on reserve for her life. Stop writing. Look this way. Whenever you're going through difficult trials in life, remember this. God has a plan for your life. I'll try this out over here. Whenever you're going through big work coming, the vicissitudes of life, you have to know that God has a plan for your life. When you read this narrative, it is clear, saints, that the Lord had this woman a part of his master plan. We know, we know, if your Bibles are still open, we know that God had a plan for her life. Because before we see her problems in the text, we see God's plan for her in the text. I'll try it one more time. Before we see her problem, we see God's plan. Her problem is in verse number 12. If your Bibles are still open, go with me to verse 12. Can I teach tonight? When you look at verse 12, we see her problem. She says what her problem is. She says when Elijah first meet her in verse number 12, she says, watch this. As the Lord your God lives, I don't have bread. All I have is a T90 bit, I'm sorry, a handful of flour in a bill and a little bit of oil in a jar. And I'm going to gather a few sticks and me and my son are going to lay down and die. Does your Bible say that? She clearly says what her problem is. In fact, if you talk to her tonight and you say, woman, what was your problem? She would say, listen, my problem was all I had was a little bit of oil in a jar and a handful of flour in a bin. And my plan was to lay down and die. That's her problem. Touch your neighbor and say, that's her problem. However, before we see her problem, we see God's plan. Her, God's plan was in verse 9. Verse 9, God tells Elijah, get up and go down to Zarephath that belonged to Zion because I have commanded a widow. Okay, you missed your shout. I, I used to be slow too, so I'm very patient when people don't get it on the first time. In verse 9, God had this woman on her mind, his mind. So before we see her problem in verse 12, we see God's plan in verse number 9. You miss your shout. I'll just give it to you. It's good to know that God has a plan for your life. It's good to know that before you encounter your problem, whatever your problem is. God has already had you on his mind. I got the wrong crowd. I need 50 folk to get excited about the fact that you ain't going through nothing by accident. It's providence. God don't believe in accidents. God believes in providence. Okay, okay. Uh, um, okay, um, um, your, your neighbor um, looks confused and because 
um, your neighbor looked confused. Um, um, your neighbor has added three minutes to the sermon because now I, I got to explain it. Um, um, Jer Jeremiah 29, uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, verse number 11, uh, in the New International Version, uh, it talks about the plan that God has for your life. Touch your neighbor and say, God got a plan for your life. God says, I know the plans I have for your life. And just in case you don't know what God's plans are for your life, can I take three minutes and tell you what God's plan for your life is? Number one, God's plan is for you to be supplied. Somebody shout supplied. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Those plans are to prosper you. I'm in the New International Version. He says, my plan is to prosper you. My plan is for you to be supplied. My plan is for you not to rob Peter to pay Paul, but my plan is to supply you. My plan is for you not to steal, to kill, or to be a robber, not to sell drugs, not to engage in clandestine activities. But my plan for you is to trust me, because if you trust me, I'm going to supply all of your needs. It's not job, Jaira. It's your over Jaira. I'm the God that's able to supply your needs. I need somebody to get up on your feet and give God a crazy praise because you serve the God that show nothing y'all too quiet. Give somebody half as a neighbor. God is my supplier. I don't have to steal. I don't have to sleep around. I don't have to lower my standard. God is my supplier. But wait, but wait, but wait, wait, sit down. His plan is not only for me to be supplied. His plan is for me to be secured. Somebody shout secured. My plan is to prosper you, watch this, and not harm you. Can I teach tonight? God says my plan for your life is number one, for you to be supplied. But secondly, my plan is for you to be secure. My, my plan is that no weapon formed against you will prosper. You don't have to fear the arrow that fly by day or the terror that fly that night. A thousand shall fall on one side and ten thousand on the other side, but nothing is going to happen to you because my plan is to keep you safe. I need somebody here tonight to give God crazy praise because all day and all night, you got angelic protection. It's not ADT. It, it, it's not the bars on the windows. It's not the alarm system. You got an angel baby watching over your life that no weapon formed against you shall prosper because God's got your back. Can you help me preach and turn to your name with a name of God's got my back? Are y'all hearing me? His plan, his plan, his plan, his plan is to keep you settled. His plan is to keep you secure. But his plan is to keep you sustained. Can the church out sustain? He says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Can the church shout and the future? Well, that means, church, if God has given me a future, it means that what I'm going through now is not going to kill me. If God is talking about my future, it means that whatever I'm going through now, I'm going to survive. You don't know when to shout. If God is talking about my future, it means that this got to be temporary. If God is talking about my future, it means there will be joy after this. There will be sustaining after this. There will be a testimony after this. Can you help me preach and find somebody and say, neighbor, I'm still going to be standing when the dust is settled. I'm still going to be here. This woman, let me hurry. This woman, let me hurry. This woman in our text tonight, she has to trust God. She has to trust the plans that God has reserved for her. Can the church out the plans God has reserved for her? Let me teach tonight. This woman, this woman, her son has just died. She's questioning God. She's at the lowest point in her life, but she has to trust that God has a plan for 
her life. But wait, church, not only must she trust the plan that God has reserved for her, she has to trust, secondly, the prophet God has residing with her. Shout back, shout, trust the prophet God has residing with her. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. In, in verse 9, media put verse 9 on the screen. When you go to verse 9, the Bible says these words. In verse 9, can I teach tonight? The Bible says, go at once to the region of Zion. Stay there. I have directed a widow woman to supply you with food. God tells Elijah to stay with the widow woman. Are y'all with me today? If you miss this, you're going to miss a major place to shout. God tells Elijah, when you get to Zarephath, stay with the woman. Tell your neighbor, God wants her to stay with her. God wants Elijah to stay with the widow woman. Not because he needs to stay there. But because she. <laughs> some, some, some of you may not know the story, so allow me to tell you the story. Prior to verse 9, Elijah, he's, he's chilling by the brook of Cherith. He, he, he has a waterfront property. Uh, he, he, he has in-room service, uh, uh, dining. Uh, he, he has uh, 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 winged creatures bringing him food in the morning and, and food at night. He got room service. He, he's Chilling by waterfront property. So, so, so God doesn't need him to stay there for his benefit. Because God can bless you by any means necessary. Somebody miss your shout. So, so th this woman, this woman, this woman, this woman needs Elijah to stay there. Elijah is staying there not because he needs to, to stay there, but he's staying there because the woman needs him to stay there. And she has to trust, she has to trust that God has hooked him, her up with the right person. She has to trust the person that God has ordained to stay at her. You missing your shout, you missing your, I'll just give it to you. When you're going through the trials of life, you have to trust that God will assign you the right person when you are going through a difficult season you have to trust that the person that God brings into your life at that season is the person that you need to have in your life God knows watch this not only who you need but God knows when you need who you need and whenever you're going through the trials of life you have to trust the person that God has assigned to your life for somebody tonight God has sent you to this church and to this pastor for a reason there's somebody right now you ain't here you ain't where you are by accident you are where you are because God knows that the person that you are linked up with is going to be your strength at the time of your weakness that the person that you're with right now God says this is the person I've sent to your life to assist you in this season in the, of your struggle. Are your Bible still open? Someone say, Pastor Jackson, how do I know if the person I'm with is the right person? How, how, how do I know if the person that I'm with right now is the person that God wants me to have? I, I, it's in verse 19. Go to verse 19. Me to verse 19. I'll tell you how you know. You know if the person is the right person. Because Elijah says to the woman, give me your son. You missed it. Elijah says to the woman, give me the son. The son just died. She picks her dead son up and she carries her son to Elijah. And Elijah says, give me your son. Okay, you missed it. Um, 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 um. The dead son is the problem. She picks up the problem. She carries the problem to Elijah. And Elijah says, I see the problem you're carrying. Give me the problem. I got the wrong crowd. 
The right person that God assigns to your life uh, will never add problems to you. Uh, they'll take problems from you. You, you, you don't know when to shout. You don't know when to shout. You don't know when to shout. I don't care how fine she may be. If she's bringing more problems than taking problems, that's the wrong one. I don't care how tall, dark, or handsome he may be. If he's bringing more problems than taking more problems, he ain't. I don't. I got the wrong. I don't care how, what kind of car he drives. I don't care how much money she makes. I don't care how good of a lover he or she may be. If they are bringing more problems than taking problems, that's the wrong one. The right person will take the problem from you. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. He, 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 he comes. I, I ain't making it up. He, he says, G -g give me G -g give me your son. You, you got this major problem in your life. This problem that's stressing you out. This problem that's causing you fear and trepidation. He says, give me the problem. Are y'all still here tonight? Let me take over the issue. The person that God assigns to your life is the one that won't add stress. They'll take stress away. Life is hard enough. I, I don't need you adding nothing to me. I got the, I don't have no help in this house. I can catch hell on my own. I don't need to be with no hell catcher. I, 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 she, she has to trust, she has to trust, she has to trust. She has, she has to trust the plan that God has reserved for her. Number two, she has to trust the person that God has residing with her. But third, and I'm done, she has to trust the power God has to reverse things for her. I wish y'all were writing this down. She has to trust, number one, the, the plans that God has reserved for her. She has to trust, secondly, the person that God has residing with her. But then she has to trust the power that God has to reverse things for her. Here it is in the text, and I'm done. Elijah carries the boy to his upper room in his bed. And the Bible said that Elijah, read the text, lays the boy on the bed, and he begins talking to God. He cries out to the Lord and he says, Lord, let this boy's life return. Elijah is talking to God. And, and please note that, that Elijah is talking to God because Elijah knows that God has the power to turn things around. That, 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 that he, he didn't go upstairs. He didn't call the mortician. He didn't call the local funeral director. He didn't call uh, the, the embalmer. He's not making funeral preparations. Uh, but he's talking to God because he recognized uh, that God is a God that can turn things around. Are y'all hearing me? The shout in this narrative uh, that you got to see the night that I'm done is that God allowed uh, this tragedy to happen because uh, sometimes God allow our tragedy uh, to line up with his title, uh, that, that he would allow uh, our plight uh, to line up with his power. Uh, th this woman has a limited knowledge about God. All she knows is that God is a replenisher because when her barrel ran low and when her oil jar got empty. Uh, she trusted God and God replenished her meal and replenished the oil. So all she knows is that the God she serves now is a God that can replenish. But God is more than a replenisher. God is a restorer. So in order for this woman to know that God can bring dead stuff back to life, she had to experience some deadness in her life. Because you don't know what God can do until you have experienced what you need him to do. You don't know when to shout. For some of y'all, the only reason that you know that God is a way maker is because you have lost your way before. 
For some of y'all, the only reason you know uh, that God is a sustainer uh, is because you've been down to your last resources. Uh, for some of y'all in the building tonight, uh, the only reason why you know that he's a bill payer uh, is because you've been down to your last dime. Uh, for others of you, the reason why you know he's a mother for the motherless uh, and a father for the fatherless uh, is because you have to bury some loved ones before. Uh, so every now and then, what God would do is this. Uh, God will allow you to go through a situation uh, and bring you out the situation uh, just so you'll have a testimony uh, that God is able. Uh, and if I'm talking to you tonight uh, and if you've seen God do some stuff for you, uh, help me preach tonight. Uh, turn to your neighbor uh, and look him or her in the face uh, and tell him, neighbor, uh, I've seen God work. Yes, a neighbor, I've seen God do it. I've seen God turn things around. I've seen God step in situations and fix things. And the Bible says that Elijah laid across the boy three different times. One time for the father, one time for the son one time for the Holy Ghost and Elijah prayed and said now Lord let the boy come back to life and that's a shout right there because what the text teaches us is if you pray and pray right God will turn it around have I got one witness in the building who's ever talked to God and seen God turn things around I ain't got no help in the building, but I brought a witness. Can he testify, Pastor? I brought somebody. Here he is. Come here, brother. I can't believe y'all turned around. His name is Hezekiah. And Hezekiah says, you're right, Pastor Jackson. I was sick on my bed of affliction. In fact, the prophet told me to get my house in order because I was on a die and not live. But can I tell y'all what I did? I turned. I turned. Turned. I turned my face to the wall and I prayed to God and I told God now Lord remember my faithfulness. Remember how I walked before you. Remember how I kept the faith. And the Hezekiah says, can I tell you what happened, Pastor? I said, what happened here is, he said, the Lord heard my prayer and he added 15 years to my life. In other words, he turned it around and I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody came tonight who need the Lord to turn some stuff around. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody walked in the building who need the Lord to turn it around. And if that's you, do me a favor and I'm going to get out of here. Turn! 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 Uh, to your neighbor, take your neighbor by the hand and tell a neighbor, you gotta trust him, you gotta trust him, trust God, you ain't talking to him, find a neighbor, look your neighbor in the face, neighbor, neighbor, trust God, trust God, if you trust him, he will work it out. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Yeah! Ain't he all right? Ah! Ah! Yeah! I don't know. I, I don't know. 
uh, look him in the face uh, and tell him, neighbor, yes he can, yes he can, yes he can, yes he can, yeah, 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 ah! Reverse it, right? At the end of the story, we've already trusted the plan he has reserved for us. We already trusted the prophet that he has residing for, for with us. Can we praise him? And this is an echo. This is an echo. This is confirmation, SG1. He told us Sunday to trust him. 
And here he comes back midweek on Wednesday and tells us again, trust him. Trust the God that's able to reverse it. Good God Almighty. Somebody say, God will turn it around. I don't want you to do too much crazy stuff if you don't believe it by faith, but I dare to just turn around like God is turning it. And he's turning it in your favor. Turn it in your favor. And when you get back around, praise him like it's turned around. Yeah. Concerning me hey. Sooner or later Turn in my favor Just turn it around for me One more time, come on church Say it won't always It won't always Begin to thank God for the turnaround. Thank Him for the reversal. Praise Him that He's a God that can handle your heaviness. So you gotta trust Him in tough times. He's able to do it. Hallelujah. Say this turn it around for me. Yes. Turn it around for me. Oh, yes. It's turning around for me. Turn around for your family. For your marriage. For your health. It's turning around. <laughs> for your wealth. For your money. It's turning around singing. For your peace of mind. Your peace of mind. It's turning around for me, sir. Somebody's got a court case. You got a court case. You need to make the declaration. It's turning around for me. <laughs> Somebody got student loans. You ought to make that declaration. It's turning around. Think it's turning around. Think it's turning around. It's turning around. It's 
one last time so you can turn around for me. Glory to God. Do me a favor if you don't mind, grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand around you. Begin to pray and intercede. You don't know what they need. You don't know what they're standing in. Turn to them. Turn to them. Be present with them. And begin to pray with them. God, you're able to do it. We trust you to do it. We trust you with our trouble. You are the omnipresent God. You are the omniscient God, the omnibenevolent God, the omnipotent God, and we trust you. We give it to you tonight. Our dead situations, we give it to you tonight. We know you can handle it. You can bring life to a dead situation. And so we lay it on the altar. Our marriages, our children, our health, our finance, our spirituality, so many things we're dealing with, we're laid on the altar. We give it to you tonight. We've tried to handle it, and we've made a mess of it, but we release it to you tonight. Every burden, every care, because your word says to cast our cares on you, so you care for us. We give it to you tonight. Believing is turned around. Lord, increase our faith to believe you can do it. Give us the strength to endure it. Give us a stamina. Give us strategy through your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Chains are breaking even now. Yokes are being destroyed even now. Somebody's getting release and relief even right now. Let him do it. And while you're praying for somebody else, God is doing it for you. While you're interceding for somebody else's house, he's doing it at your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation is happening now. Deliverance is happening now. Progress, sanctification. Hey! Somebody getting strength from your struggle. Even now, even now, even now, even now. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Oh, and it's
We trust you, Lord. You're going to survive it. You're going to survive it. Look what he's already brought you through. Jesus never failed. Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus never, hey, never failed. That's why you can trust him. Because he's never let you down before. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Trust the Lord Jesus. Trust the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. We're going home like this. We don't. We don't have a lot more we need to do. Take this glory. Take it with you. Regurgitate that word. Trust that plan he already has reserved. Trust the prophets he's already, he already has residing in your life. He taught us how to check them. Trust them. And then trust that God is able to reverse that thing and turn it around. You can trust him in your tough times. Because he can handle tough things. Hallelujah. Officially, I believe God has done the work even now. But officially, if there's one that's not saved tonight, you're out of the ark of safety. Won't you come tonight? This is a good night. This is the first night of revival. To build your relationship with Jesus the Christ. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. If you've never been in relationship with Jesus Christ, we offer Christ to you tonight, my brother, my sister. Won't you come now? Perhaps you're saved, but you're in a backslidden condition. You need restoration in your life. Won't you come now? Won't you come now? Won't you come now? You're in the cyber sanctuary, connect at SG1 Church. Email us, connect at sg1church.org. Or put the comment right there on the screen. Someone will get in touch with you. Hallelujah. 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 We're going, I want you to do something for me. I don't want to burden you, but I want us to sow. When we have a word like this, impactful in this way, I want you to put a seed on it. Real quick, real quick. I want you to put a seed on it, at least a twenty dollar seed. Those that can and will, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. And we're going, and we're going. If you need to do it electronically, do that. But I want you to put a seed on this right. Come on, let's move swiftly. Come on, come on. By faith, by faith, let's sow to the man of God, to his ministry, to this work that's been done. Come on, some of you can do more than that. Come on, come on. Come on. If you don't agree with it, don't, don't. Come on. You'll miss your blessing. Just come on. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, man of God. If you need to do it online, do it. Bless you. Bless you, woman of God. Thank you. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. Bless you, my son. Bless you, man. Bless you, woman of God. Bless you. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. Bless you to you. Come on, let's thank God. That's it. Bless you, my son. Bless your son. Thank you. Blessings to you. Amen. Blessings to both seed and sower. Now may it multiply and grow. Bless you, woman of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.
and amen. Blessed is it. Let's thank God for the word of God tonight. And let's thank God for his messenger tonight, Pastor Art Jackson. We pray strength. We remain standing in place. We pray strength and restoration and virtue to his body now in the name of Jesus. That he'll be covered under the blood of Jesus. There'll be no backlash or retaliation from the enemy now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's thank God for his ministry one more time tonight. Blessings to all of you. Thank you for being in the house tonight. God blessed us. Met us in this place. Truly revival tonight. I want to honor my, one of my spiritual sons, Elder Derek Lee from Orlando, is in the house tonight. Bless you, man of God. Thank you for being here and surprising us on tonight. And to all of our visitors and everyone for being here tonight. Blessings to you, Brian. Bilal, we appreciate you, man of God. And so many. Join us back tomorrow night. 7 p.m. Every round goes higher. We've got special musical guests tomorrow night. Uh, Minister Omega Forbes is going to lead us in worship. And then the Family Gospel Choir is going to be our special musical guest tomorrow night. And of course, the man of God will come and bring us a fresh word from on high. Amen. Amen. With other hands, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. For this is the will of God. Amen in the heavens. Amen in the earth. Until tomorrow night, y'all maintain victory. God bless you and I love you. Hug somebody. Tell them you love them and mean it.